Welcome to FarmEd Podcast. I'm John T. Brunyi, Head of Sustainable Farming and Food Systems here at FarmEd. I'm also a farmer and occasionally I describe myself as a leader. And that's what we're covering today. Um, a bit of a focus, a bit of a dig down into the world of leadership. But why? To me and to us at FarmEd, we, we, we often say we need great people. We need people with different skills. We need leaders in this agroecological regenerative transition because without leaders I don't think we're going to get there fast enough, deep enough and do, do things differently. So we often talk about you know, building great people here at, in our day job. And wonderful, yeah, to explain this topic I'm joined by uh, John Knight, author, trainer, thinker in the leadership space and co-founder of Leadership Global. Welcome John. Thank you. Thank you for great coming. Great to be here. So John, just as a bit of context, a bit of background, can you tell us a little bit about your journey, your route into leadership? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, a very quickly, a history of, I graduated as an engineer, a chemical engineer, and then got into the corporate world. I wasn't a very good engineer, so I became a businessman. Uh -huh. um, and quickly over a few years was luckily, uh, got promoted several times, was able to travel around the world. Um, and b before I was, I guess, about 37, something like that, I was the corporate vice president of a, a Fortune 100 company mm -hmm. in the States. Um, and then I became a uh, main board director of a, one of the largest companies in the UK. But there was something that was not right, and that was that um, as I got to the top of organizations, things were being expected of me that I wasn't comfortable with. Mm. At that time, I didn't really understand that it was about ethics, mm -hmm. but I just felt I, it was uncomfortable. And I got to a stage where I had the opportunity to become a, come chief executive and the compromises I would have had to make, I wasn't comfortable with. Mm. So I left. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty risky because I didn't know what was you know what the future was yeah it turned out that I became an entrepreneur and I became a serial entrepreneur okay. and during that time um, a few of those businesses it was primarily an environmental technology but not only an environmental technology um, and a couple of those organizations I set up were really successful a couple were okay uh -huh. and a few were real dogs uh -huh. to be honest yeah uh, you know so there was a lot of learning from failure as well as success um, but going back to about 1998 just by coincidence, I had the opportunity to learn to coach. Mm -hmm. And it was that, doing it on a part-time basis while I was running my own company, that I got the opportunity to start coaching other chief executives. Mm -hmm. And I could see as they were talking and, and discussing their issues, that it was like a holding up a mirror to my own mm -hmm. um, career. And realizing um, that even though you know, I'd thought and people had said that I was on balance a pretty good leader. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things I was not good at. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, something like empathy was a w was an issue. Mm. Um, and I've only become aware over the, the since then that how important mm -hmm. empathy is. Okay. And it's probably taken me 10 years or mm. more to really get the understanding of empathy and mm. build it into the way I live and work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the journey. And it was really when that started to happen. And I started when I was working with these chief executives um, that they came up with these issues, but they were recurring issues. They were always about people or mm. nearly always about people. Mm -hmm. And so each time we solved the symptom, but we never got to the cause. Mm. And that was when I discovered um, emotional intelligence, which mm -hmm. was just a new science at that time. Um, and most people thought you were out of your minds when you started talking about emotional <laughs> intelligence. Now it's, it's sort of part of the vernacular, yeah. um, which just shows how times do change. But it was at that point that I, together with a couple of colleagues, decided that you know, the rest of our careers, employed lives or whatever, we were going to see what we could do about changing leadership development. Mm. Brilliant. And Leadership Global, is it co-founder, when did you, that's a training that was, organization? It was set up in 2003. Okay. Yeah. So it's based you know, just under 20 years. Yeah, brilliant. And you're training people all around the globe at this Yeah, right? we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we have partners and, and, you know, we've accredited different organizations mm. around the world as well. Wonderful. 
So the word leadership, I think, scares people. And I don't think most people think they're leaders in any shape mm. or form. And even I question my leadership. You know, what was yeah. it all about? Could you just try and define leadership for me? Yeah, I think leadership is is about having influence over other people in one way or another, mm. either helping them to reach their own decisions, mm -hmm. persuading them to um, do things that you're passionate about, um, but also that they have to be engaged so that they believe in it. Mm. So the old adage or the sort of Stone Age uh, idea of a leader mm -hmm. of being of knowing everything and telling people what to do mm. which is still the default that most of us sort of think of when okay. we think of a leader yeah, yeah is not appropriate for the 21st century it doesn't yeah. work with this society you know we're not most of us are not in a survival mode we're not mm. waiting for a tiger to come out from around the mm -hmm. the tree to to eat us or whatever mm. and so a lot of a lot of the problems with leadership and with human development in general, mm. is that the things we're not good at are actually counterintuitive to change. Mm -hmm. Such as? Well, such as listening attentively, yes. which is a core <laughs> skill. You know, yeah. most of us are not good at listening. Yeah. Um, we're thinking of other things when we're listening. Mm. Um, so that's a skill, a really important mm. human skill that we need to develop. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots of, lots of, I could go on forever about yes. that. Yes, oh, no, good example. And so that hierarchy, that old traditional style of leadership, is that dead or is that still very present? And are there many other different okay. styles of leadership? Well, I think there are times when that is needed. Okay. If you're in a crisis, hmm. you know, if, if there's a fire suddenly starts, you're not going to ask people how they feel about the heat. Hmm. You're going to you know, give them instructions on how to get out, mm -hmm. which is fine. So in a crisis, when things are important, when you know, a company is in a, uh, an organization is in a crisis, there are times when you really need to take the metal and make decisions. Mm. So that's sort of the old style leadership. Yeah. But if you haven't built trust with the people, mm. they probably won't listen to you. Mm -hmm. So what you've got to do when times are not a crisis, and this is as true for the army as it is for you know, a, a farm, mm. if you don't build up that trust that engagement, mm -hmm. the feeling that people are important, they have ownership in what's being done, mm. then when the crisis comes, they aren't going to be much use. Okay. Yeah, I got you. And I mean, I remember I've, I've, I've done some leadership training in the past, with lots and lots of different styles and theories around yes. leadership. What, what, what's your theory? The transpersonal leadership piece. Yeah. Can you explain that? Well, bit okay. Well, well my, my theory basically is that our education system is very rational based. We learn stuff, we learn knowledge, we mm. learn processes. Mm -hmm. We don't learn about feelings, we don't learn about emotions, mm. we don't learn about values. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the more important aspects of leadership. So that's mm. where we have focused on. I think the first thing that we as human beings need to do, mm -hmm. whether you're, a, you know, what level of leader you are, mm. is to increase your own self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What are you good at? What do you need to develop? Mm. Um, what do you need to leave alone? Mm -hmm. And also understanding other people mm. and understanding the world around you. So it's very much about awareness. Okay. And the second thing I would say is adjusting your behaviors so that your best personality comes out mm. rather than you know, the way we all are. We all have these sort of behaviors that are not conducive to, mm. to building relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we've got that, then I think the third thing is about bringing our values to full consciousness. Mm. And I think this is particularly important for your kind of community mm -hmm. where people are purpose driven. Mm. You know, they want to change the world. They want to regenerate. They want to s sustain the world and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but often we've got those good values, but we don't bring them into full consciousness in everything we do mm. in the way we make decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, the, I wouldn't say it's a model because mm. I think models are sort of static, but it's a journey. Yeah. And yeah, it's a yeah. lifelong journey. Yeah. And yeah. this is human development within the context of leadership. Mm. So crucial for us, you know, we, we work with lots of purpose driven people. They might be farmers, they might be growers, advisors, yeah. um, activists. Many are social or eco entrepreneurs as well. Yeah. And yet, some small, some medium, some large scale um, yeah. lead businesses here too. So transpersonal leadership, the, the style of leadership really suits them? Well, it suits everybody suits because everyone. it's about human development. Mm. I mean, the individual, if you, if you learn the 
techniques and the skills and the behaviors of transpersonal leadership, oh. then you will be a better parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we all need <laughs> For that. Example. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know, but you'll also be a better customer. Yeah. You'll, be a, you, you'll be a better supplier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you, you will work better with your stakeholders mm. as well as just leading your employees, which is where the, 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 yeah. that's where the focus tends to be in the mind. Yeah, right? yeah, that's crucial. Because we're talking about ecosystems of yeah. people here communities yes. and stakeholders and how we work together, building those networks. Yeah. So yeah, we've all got um, you know, those complex roles to play. Another thing I've been looking at is this: these definitions of we have leaders, we have managers, we have facilitators, mentors, conveners, advisors, consultants. Yes. And I think we're all of those throughout our day job yes. at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any easy way to try and split all these different definitions yeah. out? Manager, well, th leader, yeah. facilitator. Sort of. Okay. I mean, I think what is important is that you that we have a definition and then we stick to it. Okay. Um, but as in, you know, in most things, you, there's many ways of defining anything, really. Mm -hmm. But if we take leadership, just think of it. It's about people. Yeah. It's about people fundamentally. Management is about the processes mm -hmm. and the um, the systems. Mm. So it's the it's the rational stuff. It's the it's the anal the analysis, the logic. Mm -hmm. Whereas, the the leadership is more the emotional and the spiritual, if I can use that word, mm -hmm. not in a religious sense, but yeah, in a yeah. values based Brilliant. sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, mentors are people who give advice based on their experience. Mm. Coaches are people who help others to find their own solutions. Mm. Facilitators are people who help groups to find their own solutions. Mm. But basically, mentors, facilitators, advisors, consultants, conveners, all, they're all leaders. Yes, they are all leaders. Yeah. But I think the thing is that if you take a, the facilitation role or the mentoring role or the coaching role, it's a particular leadership style for a particular situation. Yeah, got you. Okay, the ego. Where, what role does the ego play in this? Okay, so... The, the ego is what drives us to do things. And it generally, in general, it, if you think of ego and egocentric mm. in that, those terms, it's about doing things for our own benefit. Mm -hmm. And there are four drivers. There's reward, prestige, recognition, and power. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, power, mm. is all about us. Mm -hmm. The other three mm. are about... Uh, not uh, sorry, reward and power are about us, mm -hmm. but the other two mm. are about how you um, influence other people, how you, you know, it's sort of gratitude from other people is what you're looking for mm. in some. Mm. So these are drivers, and they can be very damaging because they they make us want to get things for ourselves rather than for the greater good. Mm. And as a leader, mm -hmm. it's really important, especially if we're leading an organization, mm. that we can put that into context and we can actually, we don't get a conflict between our own self-interest and the interest of the organization. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's immoral to think of your own needs, mm. but you've got to be able to separate that out. And therefore, this whole thing that I was mm. talking about earlier about awareness and increasing consciousness is so important. Yeah, yeah, got you. Okay. Thinking a little bit about our mission here at FarmEd, um, regeneration, agroecology, I suppose one of the basis, uh, some of the, the basics of that principle is enhancement, rebuilding, improving. And I guess this leadership style fits really well with that. Yes. Um, well, I think the way we look at transpersonal leadership has really got four levels. Mm. You've got the economic level, which is a sort of the basic cognitive rational level. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the emotional level, the emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the values based level, yeah. which is the spiritual. And then finally, and I think you need, you need to integrate those first three in order to do it, is you need the systems thinking. Mm. You know, complex adaptive theory and all that Brilliant. stuff, yes. which is yeah. really difficult. But yeah. what it means is that everything depends on everything else. Mm. And if you don't put more, if you just think rationally, then you think in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. You can't possibly think about all the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And that is so important. And if you look at the mistakes we've made in the world, mm -hmm. they're all because we didn't really think through the consequences mm -hmm. or understand the cause even. Yeah. And this is something that is going to be really important in the coming decades. Mm -hmm. And very few leaders know very much about it. Yeah. And it's an early science. It's yeah. an early science. Yeah. 
I think that's so pertinent to the problems they see with solution. We want co- the problems are complex, the solutions are yes. complex. Yeah. And yes, this linear thinking has got us in such a mess. Yeah. Totally agree. Wonderful. So looking forward, we've got a number of courses here at FarmEd around leadership, around facilitation. Can you tell us a little bit about the course we'll be running with you? Yeah. Well, we're going to be spending a day where there's going to be sort of a, an overview of the transpersonal leadership journey. So mm-hmm. people, we obviously can't go through through the whole journey in a day because yeah. it's it's... Well, it's at least one or two years and really a lifetime. <laughs> okay. But, but it'll, it'll make people aware of what that journey is. Yeah. But in, in addition, which is perhaps the most important, is we'll do a couple of deep dives oh. so that we'll, we'll make sure that people have some real outcomes from, from the day. Uh-huh. Um, and a couple of the things that I would just mention, I mean, there'll be quite a few of them, but, but a couple of them will be looking at the different leadership styles that individuals use in their day which mm-hmm. which leadership styles they perhaps should be using and how they might develop those new styles mm. so that's one kind of deep dive mm-hmm. the other deep dive will probably be around decision making yeah you know, how do we make decisions again we're taught to do it rationally but actually it's our intuition our insights instinct mm-hmm. ethical philosophy they all have an important impact on our decisions mm. and if we are aware of those different processes then we will make better decisions and remove the unconscious bias mm-hmm. or help to remove the unconscious bias and then i guess the third area uh, at least will be looking at stakeholder management mm. you know who are our key stakeholders in reality mm-hmm but maybe that's not how they should be. Mm. Maybe they should, the, the, the stakeholder priorities should be different mm. and in, perhaps in different circumstances. So we'll look at that kind yeah. of thing. So, the, so there'll be a lot of, there'll be other things as well, yeah. but that's uh, I think yeah. enough to be I going think on with. It'll be, a, it'll be a great introduction to this. I think this is so important. We can talk farming and soils all day, but without great leaders, we're not going yeah. anywhere. So everyone out there, if you are a, already a leader or a potential aspiring leader, and we all are, yeah. big or small, we want to see you here. Uh, please do come and join us. Come and join us and John. It'll be an inspiring, you know, mind-expanding day. Uh, so sign up soon and hopefully uh, see you here. John, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll and speak. remember, everybody is a leader. Everybody is a leader, exactly. See you soon, leaders. <laughs>